good afternoon or uh, good morning to you if you are on the west coast uh, this is sk gosh i would like to welcome uh, all of you to our web seminar today the topic is changes from ac710 to ac716 okay with, with that we will go into the seminar proper the on the first slide we are showing something that you may or may not have been aware of ac710 when it came out initially that obviously was the first printing and when copies ran out ace issued a second printing in which they picked up errata found up to that point in time but very importantly there was a third printing which you can see even looks different the title is in white as opposed to red for the first and the second printings the third printing was different from the first two in a number of important respects the third printing includes supplement number one to ac 710 which uh, consists of about two dozen technical changes mostly in the seismic area and out of those i would say seven eight of them are rather substantive so these are technical seismic changes that are in the that are integrated into ac 710 in the third printing of ac 710 integrated meaning there are no separate pages telling you this is supplement number one the items making up supplement number one have been placed where they belong in the standard and, and there are indications that these are supplementary items the second important thing that happened in the third printing is that we have a brand new seismic commentary brand new commentary to the seismic design provisions of AC 710. This for the first time is a complete commentary that will help the user. Up until now what we had left a lot to be desired. So, so this is a very significant development indeed. Uh, more errata were picked up, errata found since the publication of the second printing and finally we also went back to the typeface and the layout of AC705. Uh, I, I think must, most of you must have noticed that as we went from AC705 to AC710, the first printing or the second printing, the thickness increased. That was not so much because a lot of stuff had been added, but because the layout and the typeface were different. Now, uh, in the third printing, we brought the typeface and the layout of AC705 back. So, so despite the addition of, of, of many pages of new seismic commentary, the thickness actually came marginally down from the second printing to the third printing of AC710. Now, AC7, also processed a supplement number two to AC710, but that was done too late for inclusion in the third printing. Uh, this supplement number two consists only of a couple of items dealing with chapter 15 requirements, non-building structures. Now, the reason I went through all of this is that the changes we will talk about in AC716 are beyond the beyond ac 710 including supplements number one and two okay so supplements number one and two we will not discuss today changes in the document beyond supplement number two is our subject uh, today uh, also very importantly uh, 2012 ibc adopted ac 710 without supplement number one and 2015 ibc has adopted ac 710 including supplement number one okay so that is the difference between the two ibcs as far as ac 7 is concerned 
supplement number one is not adopted by the 2012 IBC, it is adopted by the 2015 IBC. The supplement number two came after the publication of the 2015 IBC, so that one is not adopted even by the 2015 IBC. Now, talking about changes, uh, after this slide, I will talk about changes in AC 710 in a chapter by chapter fashion, starting with chapter one. But even before we get into chapter one, I do want to point out that the title of the standard is changing after all these years. Okay, minimum design loads for buildings and other structures is now minimum design loads and associated criteria for buildings and other structures. 